Merci beaucoup, Madame Fortier, euh, et merci surtout de votre euh, accueil chaleureux ici à McGill. Euh, je suis Antonia Mayoni, je suis la présidente de la Fédération des sciences humaines, et je suis aussi euh, professeure euh, ici à McGill en sciences politiques. J'aimerais aussi euh, vous, accue vous accueillir tous à McGill et j'aimerais souligner la présence euh, et leur aide à avoir euh, aidé dans l'organisation de cette euh, conférence. Sarah Stroud, la vice-présidente adjointe à la recherche. Merci beaucoup, Sarah. Et aussi le doyen de la Faculté des arts, euh, Christopher Manfredi, qui est avec nous. Euh, Madame Fortier nous a parlé euh, de la nécessité de notre université d'être ouverte et de réseauter. Puis une des raisons qu'on est venu ici à Montréal, c'était justement parce qu'on voulait euh, élargir, si on veut, euh, la poss les possibilités de la fédération d'aller dans les communautés, dans les universités. I'd like to uh, Thank Madame Fortier for uh, having us here, for welcoming us to McGill. This is an experiment. We're taking the Federation on the road and uh, having the Federation have its annual general meeting in a university was part of that. So thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today. And I want to signal uh, in particular the presence of our former president, past president, uh, Graham Carr from Concordia University, and also Chad Gaffield, president of the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Canada Council for also joining us uh, this morning. We have an ambitious uh, agenda, just as Madame Fortier talked about uh, the ambitions of the university in the 21st century. We also have an ambitious agenda to be able to start talking about transformations, and in this particular case, in undergraduate and graduate studies. We will have workshops on the future of Congress, on big data, and on SHRC. And at the end of the day, our big thinking lecture uh, with Kevin Key, called Borders Without Boundaries, about the field of digital humanities, which is another area that the Federation uh, is studying intensively. And uh, to end it all, at our reception, we'll present you uh, the finalists, right? We'll have a dévoilé, we're going to open the envelope uh, of our Canada Prize shortlisted authors. And many of them will be with us, along with their publishers and members of the jury for these very important book prizes. So it's pretty much a full day, as you can see. And the theme of the day uh, is transformations. We've selected that theme because we are, as all of you know, in a time of change. It's a simple fact, but it has many complex implications. It's not only a time of change for us who live in university communities in our approach to research, but also in society's perception of the role that we play. Um, Many of you are rolling your eyes, I'm sure. You've heard of this before. But what's unique, I think, in today's world is the level of uncertainty and often the open skepticism about the value of liberal arts and the way that so much is changing, including t digital technologies, in our landscape of teaching and research. So there's a lot of pressures that we live in in the world of humanities and social sciences, but it doesn't mean uh, that we are in a crisis. Uh, I, I wrote an article once talking about crisis and how we use crisis in language about public policy. And I think in the same way when we talk about crisis in humanities and social sciences, it's often self-defeating and perhaps ultimately damaging because it creates a siege mentality. And often you make decisions in a siege mentality that are not the right ones. So I would hope that today would help us uh, to talk about transformative, transformation of our environments in our landscape, and to try to also engage on discussions about the opportunities of what these changes uh, mean. So that we do have significant challenges, perhaps even real threats, but that there are, in effect, opportunities uh, that we need to grasp as well. Madame Fortier mentioned very briefly uh, the concerns about funding in post-secondary education, and this is obviously a concern across all of our university campuses, but let me tell you, here in Quebec, we obviously lived it firsthand uh, with our Maple Spring. 
Now, there's a healthy range of views about um, how to address these challenges, about what's the correct or proper uh, number of dollars that should go into paying for university education. But the fact that we have a diversity of opinions on it means that we have to also come to the question um, with not just a critical eye, but also an open eye, uh, an open mind, um, because we do live in a liberal and democratic society. And so this exchange and difference of opinion is important to recognize. Il faut aussi qu'on regarde au-delà de nous-mêmes pour avoir une vision complète. Et, et souvent, dans notre communauté en sciences humaines, on ne fait pas ça. Nos membres sont engagés dans des secteurs très différents, tous aussi fascinants, euh, dans l'éventail de l'enseignement de la recherche. Et tout ce travail est porteur de transformation. Et c'est la fédération qui essaie grâce à sa capacité de rassembler et de nouer les liens entre les chercheurs et les domaines différents, qu'on essaye de contribuer à convaincre les décideurs de créer des conditions propices à la mise en valeur euh, de ce qu'on fait. Et la fédération, on essaye d'inspirer et instaurer un dialogue à l'échelle du pays. Euh, et on le fait de plusieurs manières. Par exemple, nous sommes présents sur le terrain de la sensibilisation aux positions Politique. Bon, alors, notre, notre bureau à Ottawa, par exemple, est le lieu d'où on rentre dans les entretiens réguliers avec des ministères, des parlementaires, euh, des groupes d'intérêt, et ça, à, à travers toutes les formations euh, politiques. Nous présentons des mémoires, nous encourageons les meilleurs penseurs au pays de prendre une part active aux consultations sur les questions particulières. Et nous nous faisons un devoir, ce qui n'est pas fait toujours, parce qu'on vit dans nos, nos universités souvent, mais c'est la fédération qui essaye de se familiariser avec les travaux des membres de, des institutions à travers le pays, euh, de Royal Roads à Vancouver jusqu'à Memorial à Terre-Neuve. Donc, notre rôle en tant que fédération est justement de veiller à ne pas laisser l'arbre nous cacher la forêt et à projeter une image complète de la communauté des sciences humaines. And to give you an idea of the work of the Federation in trying to, in effect, meet these objectives and challenges, um, I'd like to just go over a couple of the highlights of what we did this year. And this year, one of the more exciting events, and many of you were present, was our Congress, in which we had nearly 8,000 delegates gathered at the far end of the, of the country, at the edge, which was the, uh, the theme of the Congress, at the University of Victoria. And what really uh, inspired me and really uh, what I very much enjoyed about that conference was that not only did we have 68 scholarly associations, 60 exhibitors at the expo, uh, but we also had members of the local community. And we really, it was a community effort, in other words. The Congress typically brings between nine and $12 million to the local economy. And it was as if in Victoria you could see how important that was. Um, we had programming that went from the academic, Danny Laferriere engaging with Francophone communities uh, in Victoria, Louise Arbour, sellout crowd um, to uh, many, with many Victorians and people from the city uh, coming to listen, and Buffy St. Marie, who had a wonderful concert on the open lawn and their beautiful campus. So it really was the sense that we were part of a local community and not just talking among ourselves, but also uh, reaching out. We had incredible media attention, over 164 media stories in traditional medias, and of course our Twitter was trending in Canada that week, which was pretty cool, our uh, Congress hashtag. So we're expecting to do the same uh, this year as well. Non seulement ça, mais la Fédération est très active uh, à travers um, la série, série Voix Grand, our Big Thinking Lecture Series. Voix Grand se tient principalement sur la colline du Parlement, sur la route et au Congrès. Et c'est vraiment une initiative des très intéressante parce que ce qu'on fait avec Voir Grand Big Thinking, c'est qu'on demande à nos chercheurs, à nos penseurs de venir échanger, de venir parler de leur recherche, euh, non seulement avec des universitaires, mais aussi avec des communautés, des communautés des décideurs, des communautés euh, locaux aussi. Alors, on a vraiment, euh, c'est une initiative qui dure maintenant depuis deux décennies presque, et la liste des orateurs est vraiment euh, des plus impressionnantes. 
Another area of work, the Federation, which affects the lives of most of you in this room, is the long-standing awards to scholarly publications program. And through this program, the Federation supports research dissemination and encourages excellence in the humanities and social sciences through awarding um, grants and transition grants. And the total is over $1.5 million for the dissemination of Canadian research. It's provided generously by SHRC, so I want to again thank Chad Gaffield for his continued support of this very important activity of the Federation. And the other thing that flows from this, uh, from this funding is of course the Canada Prizes Program. It awards four prizes annually to the best scholarly books in the humanities and social sciences. And as I mentioned tonight at the reception, we'll be able to uh, open up the shortlist uh, but also introduce you to some of the authors and the jury members who are, who are part of that as well. The interesting thing about that Canada Prize Award is that it's bilingual. So we have prizes for, both, for books in both French and English. Et cet équilibre entre le français et l'anglais est manifeste, non seulement à travers les prix, mais également dans la composition de, du conseil d'administration de la Fédération. C'est ses adhérents et dans toutes les initiatives de l'organisme et son travail d'élaboration des politiques. Et au cours de mon mandat, en tout cas, j'ai pu constater l'attachement de la Fédération au bilinguisme, notre interprétation simulée aujourd'hui aussi, mais aussi que la journée elle-même a été conçue en fonction de cette euh, conviction de l'importance du bilinguisme à travers, au sein de notre Fédération. Speaking of language, um, the Federation has also taken important strides this year to improving communications with our various audiences. We've rolled out our new brand, uh, Ideas, Idee, publish a monthly communique uh, newsletter, a bi-weekly blog, daily tweets. All of these initiatives have markedly improved our presence and hopefully our connection to you in the community uh, as well. We have our annual report, which is being unveiled today, hot off the press. And uh, for those of you who want to know a little bit more about our activities, we have a video that will be playing during lunchtime, I believe, so you'll be able to see the activities of our uh, Federation up close uh, and personal. Looking ahead to 2014, and again in this thematic of transformations, um, I just want to say a couple of words about where the Federation is headed. We're currently working on our new strategic plan, and uh, this is something that is a rewarding exercise inside the Federation, um, but it's also a rewarding exercise to reach out to our members. Uh, we know what we've accomplished, we're very proud with what we've accomplished, but there's also a sense of a lot more to be done. And that's where your contributions become uh, essential in shaping the future of the Federation, which is, after all, your Federation, Federation of Social Sciences and Humanities, and I'm hoping that many of you become engaged in that conversation uh, throughout the year, but also um, in our frank and informal conversations that we can have starting today. L'autre événement clé qui arrive à très grands pas est évidemment le Congrès 2014 qui se tiendra dans huit semaines à peine, si le printemps arrive, à, à l'Université Brock du 24 au 30 mai. Et le thème du Congrès de cette année est Frontières sans limites. It's a lovely theme, Boundaries without borders. Et on a une programmation vraiment splendide. L'Université Brock, qui euh, est, je pense, une, une université qui est dans une des régions les plus jolies euh, du pays, euh, a mis euh, une, vraiment une programmation excellente euh, pour nous offrir non seulement la programmation à l'intérieur du Congrès, mais aussi les activités dans la région aussi. Le chiffre des inscriptions est déjà excellent et nous espérons vous retrouver toutes à Sainte-Catherine. Comme beaucoup d'entre vous le savent déjà, nous sommes aussi, euh, dans ces derniers mois, on a eu le plaisir d'annoncer les sites qui vont accueillir les prochains congrès. En novembre, nous avons annoncé que le congrès 2016 se tiendra à l'Université de Calgary Et il y a trois semaines, nous avons rendu public que Ryerson University avait été retenu pour 2017 à Toronto. Et tout en travaillant à l'aboutissement de ces deux annonces importantes, nous sommes déjà très occupés à préparer le congrès 2015 qui se tiendra à l'Université d'Ottawa euh, au mois de juin euh, prochain sur le thème euh, 2015 sur le thème des idées capitales, qui est 
tout donné pour euh, une conférence qui sera à l'Université d'Ottawa. OK. I hear you laughing, but it's actually a really, a really good theme. You know, securing these conference dates, these Congress dates, or arranging interesting programs is only part of our task. And part of this consultation on the strategic plan is going to focus on the future of Congress itself. We need to kind of understand what it is that we're trying to get at uh, as we organize these Congresses to ensure that uh, the kind of vision that we've had since the outset for the Federation, for the Congress, uh, can truly fulfill itself. This is, I think, even more important today when we're going through these transformations of our environment and our own community, uh, because the Congress is, in effect, a really important moment in the intellectual life uh, of our country. So the questions are, how do we bring Canadians interested in ideas, who may not be in those communities, into the conversation? How do we strengthen multidisciplinarity among our various units, something that the Congress does as a fact of life? How do we more effectively engage colleagues outside of Canada, internationally, to become members and to join us at Congress as well? And Jean-Marc Mangin, our executive director, is leading a workshop this morning to really try to bring out some creative ideas about the future of Congress. We really do believe that we have at the Federation a role to play in shaping and creating space, such as the Congress, such as our big thinking and other activities, uh, to lead the charge, right? To become part of that part of the conversation on issues that cut across the humanities and social sciences. And so that's why we've launched actually two really important projects this fall. One has been on um, open access. And open access is one of those issues that brings with it a lot of baggage and often a lot of uh, concerns. And in particular, our concerns are uh, about the ASPP. You know that through its history, the Federation has supported the publication of over 6,000 books uh, that have helped to enrich our universities, our colleagues, and our, the social and cultural intellectual life of Canada. And we have been at the Federation a supporter of the principles of open access since 2011. And to date, most of those conversations have been about research published in academic journals. But now, the Federation is taking on the topic of scholarly books, uh, funded through our uh, Aid to Scholars program, uh, that would make this publicly funded research more readily and widely available while still encouraging a dynamic and innovative Canadian academic publishing sector. Le deuxième projet qu'on a ouvert uh, se propose d'établir un cadre permettant de mesurer l'impact de la recherche en sciences humaines. Encore là, c'est un sujet controversé, c'est un sujet qui soulève beaucoup de craintes, euh, mais on sait que notre travail dans le monde des idées et du savoir a des incidences multiples sur nos étudiants, nos communautés, l'économie, au sens large, et les Canadiens, et exerce son influence sur l'enseignement, les mesures budgétaires et les politiques publiques. Donc c'est quand même quelque chose de très important faut prendre mesure de ces répercussions. Et ça, ça représente un défi énorme, car le langage, les concepts, les indicateurs utilisés euh, dans les disciplines techniques et scientifiques, tels que les citations, le nombre de brevets, les revenus tirés des licences, par exemple, ont une relevance limitée dans nos disciplines. So, in an era of ranking, of outcomes, and of impact measurement, it's really important to appropriate the language of measurement, to understand it and to communicate it properly. And we want at the Federation to explore how to develop sets of indicators that make sense for our community and, as Shirk would say, for telling our stories. So it's both of these projects that are addressing the transformations of our environment also have, uh, I think, the potential to be transformative. And this, of course, is what we strive to be, not just as a Federation, but as a community uh, as well. So, we are not afraid to take on some of these important and big questions. And uh, we know that taking them on brings its own challenges. We've seen this in our own work, and you've seen it in your own work. Uh, resistance, aversion to change, skewed public perceptions, media oversimplification, realities of budgetary constraints. And the Federation, however, is well positioned to take these challenges head on. 
Jean-Marc and his staff in Ottawa do this on a daily basis. They represent us, the social sciences and humanities, in the corridors of parliament, in the media, in public and private meetings, year round. But they can't do their work unless they have input and content from us. So we need, as a community as well, to engage. So we need your ideas, your energy, uh, to achieve these aspirations for, the for our uh, scholarly community uh, as a whole. Because at the end of the day, it's the ideas, so that's our key idee, ideas, that can be really transformative. Alors, nous avons besoin de vos idées, de votre engagement et de votre énergie pour mieux faire, pour réaliser nos aspirations et démontrer que vraiment les idées peuvent changer le monde. Merci beaucoup. Alors, maintenant, j'aimerais inviter au podium le prochain panel et le premier panel euh, de cette conférence. Merci.